Big Hats, it's Ed Wallet Saver Bud here. The Adidas Adizero Prime X Strung, one of the best shoes that I've ever worn. Sadly, it's also one of the most expensive. A wallet obliterating price of £230 over here in the UK. That's going to place it outside of many people's budgets right now, especially considering the economic climate. As such, it's time to see if I can get together some superb running shoe rotations with multiple pairs all for the same price of the Adidas Primex Strung. Let's see what bargains we can find. Hey cats, thanks for joining me on The Good Ship. Finding running shoes for less cash and saving people a few bob. Hit that subscribe button down below and the bell for notifications. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. I always appreciate you tuning in. Dankeschön. So I've got two rotations for you today. One for 10K or half marathon training and racing and another for the full marathon training and racing. Lots of mile mashing, let's roll. Gonna kick it off with the marathon rotation first. First up a nice shoe for cushion, longer runs and maybe even daily use. The Sumitros 2 from Reebok. This one's only just come out but I've managed to find a solid gold deal for you. I found a discount to lower that one down to 65 earth credits from 100. So that's a nice tasty 35% off saving on an already nicely priced shoe. We got bucket loads of float ride foam here. If you've not come across that one before, let me explain. This is the Sumitros 1 here. You can see you've got loads of very small pellets all finely packed together. Makes for a really nice cushioned ride. Much more cushion than it first appears in hand in fact. I found the Sumitros one to be quite light and nimble. I think they present great value for money, especially in a rotation like this one. It fits right into a cash conscious combo. I think the orange flare version is more orange fire, to be honest. So that's going to cover quite a few bases for us. You could probably run some easy miles in that one too. It certainly hits the spot for the longer runs. There's a little bit more stability in the Sumitros model. So 65 down, that leaves us with 165 to play with. We need a race shoe and something for speed training as well. Let's examine the options. Over at Achilles Heel, up and running, and a couple of other retail stores, we have the awesome Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. So that's at a budget saving £100. Hard to believe this great shoe has been reduced that much. I know we've had the Endorphin Pro 3 released very recently. Now, the Endorphin Pro 2 is a touch firmer than the 3, not quite the squash, but it's still very forgiving. I know some people that have run some sub-3 marathons in this one, so it's certainly got the chops. Paul Card, I'm talking about you. A very light upper which is super breathable minimal grip for road running just enough and a spot on eight mil drop that seems to me to be the best balance between the amount of cushion in the heel and the forefoot only limited sizing left on these though guys so do get in quickly so for the racing shoe in the rotation it's the endorphin pro 2 that leaves us with 65 pounds left to play with how amazingly generous of you ed bud that's quite all right ed bud not a huge amount to play with i've got to be honest but i'm sure there's something we can find to do some speed training in for that type of cash now i found a gem that provides something a little bit different compared to the other two shoes in this rotation the nike air zoom rival fly 3 so a more responsive lower stack shoe we got the nike air technology up front i think it's a zoom airpod in the forefoot it's a bit of a smaller one but everything about this shoe is a little bit weight relieved it does feel like an old racing flat i suppose ideal for a smattering of speed training into your marathon schedule more low profile shape around the ankle and reasonably low weight too now these are 50 5690 at Keller Sports. I'm not entirely sure why they've chosen that very strange amount, but it is what it is. I felt these were like a relation to the Nike Streak 7. Firmer foam and a split tongue. There's lots of things that they share in common. It's a bit of a heart back to the race flat days, you know, back in 2017, I suppose, where people used to wear very thin midsole shoes and seem to run a marathon in those. Can't see that happening now. It's just like a sea of vapor flies now, isn't it? So that leaves us with change of eight pounds 10. I suppose you could go out and buy a box of gels for your marathon effort. All right, case closed. Now we move on to the half marathon or 10K training and racing rotation. So we're back to 230 earth credits. I can feel the power. What can I find to facilitate some fast, furious foot movement? Daily trainer-wise, a real winner. Using the JD Sports app and an extra 20% off code, I found the Pegasus 39. I did it. 
in a white and red version, which I think is quite new actually, only released recently for 56 Earth credits. 56. Oh yeah. Wild value for a superb daily trainer. Almost 50% off, it can't be sneezed at, and the outsole of the Pegasus is more than up to the wild winters ahead. Yeah, I guess the colorway is not absolutely ideal for autumn winter running. It's probably gonna get pretty dirty, but I think if you're worried about that, then you're probably not gonna be going out there in those sort of conditions. You'll just stay indoors with a nice cup of Bovril. I found this version of the Pegasus to be a real winner in terms of versatility. Just a great daily shoe, and I don't think you can turn your nose up at this price. The React Foam and the Zoom Air units in this one really do work very well, provide some good response not just like a sort of daily slogger you could probably do some faster stuff in it too and a very durable combo as well it's so one thing that react is it is durable lots of sizes at jd sports right now so that's only 56 pounds off of our 230 to 174 to be precise what can i find of worth I was thinking light, sort of speed training, just a smattering of it here and there. Maybe something that you could race in alternatively for a shorter distance. How about the Puma Liberate Nitro? It's got response, it's got low profile written all over it. Well, it doesn't, but you know what I mean. Puma grip on the outsole, a very flexible feel, and could even work on the track at a push too. Only £60 from Puma themselves. So what are you doing, Puma? How can you sell it for that amount? There's a whole range of colorways and different versions. I really like the mesh on the Liberate Nitro. It kind of felt a little bit like a carrier bag mixed with sort of old 80s Star Wars toys. The Nitro Foam underfoot is quite compressive, yet you've got a very reasonable amount of it. It doesn't feel like you're being elevated too far from the ground. You can really feel the ground. Perhaps not ideal for longer runs, but we got other things for that. Shorter, higher paced efforts, I think the Liberate Nitro absolutely nails it. I think when you're doing 10K or half marathon training, you want something where you can be hitting out some one mile or one kilometer repeats. Maybe some like 20 minute threshold efforts with some recovery in between. I think the Liberate Nitro is a bit of an unsung hero for these types of use cases. And loads of people haven't tried it out as well. It's seen as being a bit of a budget shoe, I suppose, but it's far from that. It's good quality. Again, it has that good balance between cushion and underfoot feel. So minus 60 pounds off of our total leaves 114 pounds. Can I find a race shoe for that? Seriously? Over at Pro Direct Running, we've got an insane deal on the lightweight racer, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite Windwash. I don't know what the windwash means, whether it's some sort of winterized version. I'm not quite sure. It might just be the colorway. Race-wise, this one is a real cracker. A beautiful colorway of Puma's most standard race shoe in a white ocean drive and fizzy lime variant. Only 119 Earth credits this one, guys. It's as close as I could get to finding something that would fit with what I had left. So it does put us a touch over budget by a few quid, but you know, we could perhaps take some of the empty bottles back to the shop or sell one of the many Blu-ray or DVD movies that we've got that we've never watched. I think when you've got a deal of 51 pounds off of this model, you can't really say no. And then you've got other new models of Puma trainers that are priced well well over that like the deviate nitro 2 i can't see why people are sitting on the fence on this one i've tried it and it's a really really great shoe superb grip from the outsole and a carbon plate to help you along not to mention the resilient but propulsive cushion of the nitro elite foam a must to check out and a very underrated shoe and that forms the racer for this rotation so 119 off of our 114 leaves us five pounds in the red but that is the closest i could get to a fun three shoe rotation for 10k to half marathon training and racing all for the price of one pair of the adi zero primex strung it's just insane value right there and three very different shoes in both rotations to really give you coverage across every type of run what would your selections be for 230 english pounds let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comments musical interlude time Today it's an album from my morning jacket, it's called At Dawn. Now, not many people know about these guys. They released quite a lot of albums, you know, from many years ago, but they seem to have disappeared a little bit off the scene. Very interesting group, lots of 
reverb and stuff on the vocals very epic sort of sound very country sort of americana i suppose one of the best tracks on this album though is track number five called hopefully this sounds like it's been recorded like on someone's porch or something in the middle of summer you can hear like crickets and noises perhaps even of the tape machine that they were using but the vocal on here is just insanely good it's sort of comparable i suppose to like a Roy Orbison type track. It's got that long, epic kind of sound. Very simple acoustic guitar playing throughout. Not an awful lot of instrumentation here, but it's the vocal that captures me. It's got a lot of subtlety. You believe the singer and the words that are saying. Some great guitar tones to check out across the album. I recommend you check out At Dawn by My Morning Jacket. Thanks for tuning in today and sticking with me to the end of the video. It's always appreciated. Hit me up with a super thanks if there's a particular question you want to get straight to the mind of Ed Bud. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.